Well, good morning, and we welcome you to our service this morning at Abundant Life Fellowship Church in Franklin, Pennsylvania. And we we just we just welcome you. We're glad that you came to be with us today. We pray that this video would be a blessing to you. You know, God's grace has been made available to all of us for blessing. And, and, and giving us a successful life. And we receive those blessings by faith. You know, faith is so important that, that anything that you speak, if you have faith, it will, it will come to pass. And so we must be careful what we say, because if we believe what we say and, and don't doubt, we're going to have it. That's according to Mark chapter 11. But we have a spiritual enemy. And his purpose, he, he tries to cause us to uh, be concerned about things that are going on in our lives. You know, to be concerned until the point that we start worrying about them. And when we start to worry, it takes us into fear. It takes us into unbelief. It takes us into a lot of, a lot of problems in our life, physical problems. You know, if you worry, it, it, it brings physical problems. But it blocks God's blessings so that we don't receive everything he's promised us. And it's not God's will for us to worry or be in stress. You know, as we've been given that free choice, that free moral expression, and we have the choice of whether or not to allow worry and fear to enter in our lives. We have a choice. And I, I want you to know today, you have a choice whether to worry or trust God. It, it can't, that, that negative emotion, it can't express itself if you believe God instead of the circumstances. If you believe his word more than you believe the world. You know, we look at the world and, and, and with our natural eyes, we look at the world and we see all the problems that are taking place in the world. And, and it, it causes us to, to wonder, you know, is this nation going to survive? Is, is, you know, is, am I going to lose everything that I have? Is our financial situation, you know, in, in, in this country, is it going to all fall apart? I mean, there, there's so many things, and, and those of us that are on the Internet, you see these negative things all the time. You, you know, and, and you're allowing these negatives to cause worry and stress. But if we will just believe God more than we believe the circumstances. Folks, if you will believe God more than you believe the circumstances, if you will believe in his blessings more than you believe in the cursings, I'm telling you, folks, you will be exalted. You will have more than you know what to do with. That's what God says. You know, we live in a stressful world. We do. We live. This world is very stressful. But you're more effective when you can rest in what Jesus has done instead of stressing out over what others do. Staying at rest empowers us to move out of worry and find grace. So no more worrying. That's the title of my sermon today. And, and I want you to know ahead of time, I've, I've used uh, several different translations of the word to, to uh, put this sermon together. So uh, if you, my translation doesn't agree with your translation, well... I understand, 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, for what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? And, and of course, you know, if you drop down to verse 33 uh, in Matthew chapter 6, it says, you know, if you will, will trust God, seek God, seek his righteousness, seek his face, all these things, these things, what things? So, well, what you eat, what you drink, what you put on, what, you know, what's in your checkbook? What's, if you will believe God more than you believe the world, all these things will be added to you. See, God doesn't want you to be worried. He doesn't want you to be stressed. Because when you start to worry, you get into fear. And a few weeks ago, I, I ministered a sermon on fear. If, you've, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can drop down through the list of, of our videos and see, you know, I, I ministered about the spirit of fear. But even underlying fear is condemnation. And, and so you feel condemned. You feel like you're condemned to live the way the rest of the world lives. And we're not condemned to that because we are the children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We're children of Almighty God, and he blesses his children if you'll just believe in him. This gospel of grace will take you out of condemnation. You say, well, but pastor, you don't know what I did. Well, I, it doesn't, you know, that doesn't make any difference if you will just repent and trust God. You know, let, let's read, um, let's stay here in Matthew chapter 6 for a while. And we're going to start with, with uh, verse 25. That is why, and this is out of the New Living Translation, by the way, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink, enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about clo your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Uh, we all have the potential to worry about everyday life. We have to reach the point where when worry knocks on the door, we won't answer. We all know intellectually that we don't need to worry. But when we lack basic necessities, the temptation to worry is real. But I want you to know today, God has your back. He's watching over you. You know, when uh, when soldiers go into a battle and you know that somebody has your back, you don't worry about the battle that's going forward. Somebody is watching over you. Well, today I want you to know there's a battle going on for your soul. There's a battle going on in the earth. There's a battle going on. The devil is he, he he kills he steals he destroys but 
you don't have to worry because God's got your back. And Jesus goes ahead of you. And if you will speak the word and and and, and live in the word, the, the word that's alive and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, you know, when we when we look at the the armament that God has given us, the word is a, is a sharp sword coming out of your mouth, and it will destroy the enemy. You know, we're told to trust God, believe God, honor God, and then resist the devil and he will flee from us. And see, when you trust God and you and you speak the word and you believe the word, that that gives you the the ability to chase the devil away. He will run because God will take care of his creation. You know, we see the term in the Bible, little faith. Well, little faith is, is, is like spotty, inconsistent faith. It, it, it's it's uh, a type of faith where you vacillate between one thing or another. Well, see, we can't have that kind of faith. We have to believe in the finished works of Jesus. And he says, my peace, I'll leave with you. My peace, not as the world gives, but as I give. Well, when, it, when we start to believe that he gives us peace, that he gives us rest, more than we believe what's going on around us, Folks, you're going to live a different kind of life when you don't have to worry about things. You know, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3 says, We've, For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I've sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And then drop down to verse 11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You know, we have to believe and enter into rest. That's the key to avoiding a worry-filled life, is to enter into rest. Rest is not necessarily inactivity or resting from work. It's resting while we work, while we do what we need to do. We become more productive this way because we're resting in our work and God's working on our behalf. When we truly believe what Jesus has done, we can enter into a confident, peaceful rest. Not that there aren't opportunities to worry and stress out. Sometimes entering into rest is in itself hard work. You know, sometimes we, we have to work to enter into rest. We have to work to maintain our belief in what Jesus did. When 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 things are coming against you, you know, and 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 it's like a hammer pounding on your life. It, it sometimes you have to to just step back and say, Lord, I'm entering into your rest. I'm entering into your rest, Lord. No, I'm entering. I want your peace in my life. And when I pray for people. So much of the time when I pray for people, I pray for people to have peace in situations while they're, while they're going through a problem area, while they're going through a bad situation. I pray for them, Father, give them peace that passes all understanding. What does that mean? It means that we can we can be at peace when we don't even know why we're at peace. When when everything is swirling around us, and you know we're we're just at peace. We're just at peace, and we go through the situation. We go through the problem. You can't run from your problems. You you have to go through them. So, but we go through at peace, at rest. You know. 
something that a lot of people say a lot of the time, and it it kind of kind of grates on me a little bit, and that is that people say, "Well, take care." No, I tell people all the time, no, I, I don't take care because First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, casting all your care upon him because he careth for you. You know, we can cast our cares on him. We can go to him <coughs> and we can talk to him and cast our cares on him. You know, when when you line up with God, that's true humility. And and pride will keep you from doing that. A proud person, you know, refuses to cast their cares on him because I can take care of this myself. Well, no, you can't take care of it or you wouldn't be worrying about it. Well, but, but, but it, it, you know, it, it's a natural human emotion. Yes, it is. But, see, we can live above those things with Jesus because he gives us more grace. Look at James chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but it gives grace unto the humble. It's true humility. When you can trust God and you line yourself up with what God says. So in other words, casting our cares is to trust and believe God and rely solely, confidently, on him to take care of your problem. To rely on God to take care of your problem. You say, well, my problem was caused by me. Yeah, a lot of times that's the case. But I'm telling you, God forgives all your sin. He forgives. He has forgiven. Jesus paid the price for your sin on the cross and God has forgiven your sin, so you need to forgive yourself. You know, Jesus said uh, that the new commandment that he gave us, that actually encompasses all the Ten Commandments, he said, you know, to love one another and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, a problem that many of us have had is not loving ourselves. You know, we 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 uh, criticize ourselves. We condemn ourselves. We bring problems to ourselves because we we don't love ourselves the way we should. Now that doesn't mean that you 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 know. Well, I'm just the best there ever was. No, not necessarily. But you can rely confidently on him. You know, under the old covenant, the the order of things was work first and then rest. Under the new covenant, it starts out with God's rest first. Then our work is better because we're resting in it. You know, it, wouldn't you rather be a rather worker, a better worker? Wouldn't you rather be the kind of worker that everybody wants in their business, in their company? Well, when you can start resting in your work, you're going to be the best worker in, in, in the company. But you have to be at rest while you're working. I've asked people as I counseled them uh, through a problem that they were having. I said, uh, if five years from today, will this still be a problem for you? Will you still be worrying about it? And most of the time when they stop and think about it, no, it's not going to be a problem. Five years from now, you probably won't even remember that you were having this problem today. Well, when you when you begin to to think about that, you know worrying is fleeting. You can, you can you can worry about one thing one day and and something else tomorrow. 
You know, and and it's like the devil wants to compound these these problems on you so that he keeps you in a constant state of worry. But but it's 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 momentary. And when you find rest in Jesus, then you can, you know, all these worries just go over your head and then they they don't give you that that feeling and we all know that feeling of worry we all know what that feels like that it, it feels like uh, you know you don't want to eat you don't want to sleep you 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 can't sleep you you just lay there and 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 you worry about what am i going to do tomorrow and how am i going to handle this and how am i going to take care of this and 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 it goes on and on and on and on but we as believers, see, we can trust God and, and we can rest. And, we, you know, in Jesus, we don't have to worry about it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 uh, says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. You know, begin to make declarations over your life. I declare that God is going to meet this need. I I, I call this thing into being, and I declare it. You say, well, Pastor, does that really work? Yes, it does. Tell God what you need and begin to thank him for it. Because, see, when you pray and believe, you receive not actually you have to wait until the thing actually takes place you can begin to thank god for what you prayed for instead of you know what you've already received we we have to we have to begin to understand that that in the spirit realm things are taking place all the time and as you speak into the spirit realm you are receiving from God as you as you begin to make declarations over your life that you declare that that this is the way it's going to go this is what I'm going to have and as you declare those things as you speak them begin to believe that you have them and Amen. trust God because when you do that, you ride the wave of peace and you rest all the way into the manifestation of those things that you've called into being. You can, you can, you know, you can rest all the way in and, and not worry about what you need because the manifestation will come. Remember when Daniel prayed and he asked God for things and, and, and he kept praying, he kept believing, he kept trusting, and finally three weeks later, <coughs> the angel showed up and gave him the answer that he needed. And the angel said, you know, I had to fight my way through the heavenlies to get to you, but but you trusted, you believed, and as soon as you prayed, God sent it. He sent the answer, but but it took me three weeks to get here. Well, sometimes when we pray and declare things and call things into being, we have to trust that they're going to happen. You know, so many times you see people that that come forward for prayer for healing. And the Bible says, let the elders, you know, call for the elders to lay hands on the sick that they will recover. Well, people come forward for prayer. And you pray the prayer of faith over them. And you lay hands on them. And you minister to them in the spirit realm. But there's no change in their feelings. They still feel the same way they felt when they walked up there. You know, they still have that pain. They still have that that thing in their body. And so they walk back to their walk back to their seat 
with the thought and sometimes with saying, you know, well, I guess I didn't get it. Well, yeah, you got it. You received, but you negated it with your mouth. And we have to learn not to do silly things like that. You know, that's, we, we do silly things. We negate God's blessings with our mouth by saying, you know, well, I'm going to go broke. Or, you know, COVID came around and I'm going to get it. Well, you know, I have declared from the beginning I'm not going to get it. Well, I've had it twice. And, it, you know, it, but here I am. And it, it, it wasn't as bad as everybody made it out to be. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Verses 16 through 18, the message where it says this. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us on the inside. Where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today and gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I, I think I misquoted that. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. The things we can't see now will last forever. You know, it's like, you, you know, you ask for something that you need today, and you get it. But then tomorrow, it's, it's gone. You know, some people, they just worry so much, they give up. And other people panic. Panic is groundless fear of something that hasn't happened yet. It, it, it's groundless. And, and yet, people panic about things. Instead of panicking about something that has not even happened, we should believe in God and what has happened. You know, <laughs> you hear stories about people that... Um, are being warned that there's a hurricane coming. And panic ensues. You know, and and you can't get out of the city because, you, you know, the traffic's backed up for miles and miles and you, and you can't get away. And and people panic. They, they, they lose, they lose their minds sometimes. I mean, they, they fight, they, they, they argue, they're, cantankerous, but those of us that are at rest, it's like, okay, this thing's coming, but I'm going to weather it, and I'm going to get through it, and now I'm not saying, you know, well, stay in your house if they're telling you your house is going to blow away or wash away, but, but I'm saying, be at rest in what you do. Don't allow the 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 panic of the moment to affect you. We go through tough times. We go through rejection. And it seems like we'll never be good enough to be accepted. But you must persevere because things will change. Things can change. They will change. Amen. You know, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. We can, we can be upset about something today and tomorrow. It's all taken care of. So we have to allow God to... to work in our lives. We have to allow him to change things for us. 
you know, we have to learn to judge ourselves and not allow other people to be our judges. Colossians chapter 2 says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday. For of the new moon or the Sabbath days, what are the shadows of things to come? But the body is of Christ. We're of Christ, folks. You are of Christ. <coughs> And the Sabbath was a day of rest, you know, and, and it was God, God instituted it. The Bible says on the seventh day he rested. He, he rested from all his work. And in the Old Testament, the Sabbath was a particular day. It, it, you know, today's the Sabbath. You can't do any of the things that you would normally do. You can't work. You can't, you can't, uh, you know, even the animals had to endure the Sabbath because the people weren't allowed to take care of them the way they normally would. But in the New Testament, I want you to understand, Jesus is our Sabbath. He is our day of rest. He is our rest. Not that you don't need rest for your body. Yes, you do. You have to have rest for your body. But this, the, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And therefore, the Son of Man is, is Lord also of the Sabbath. So Jesus was Lord of the Sabbath, Mark chapter 2. Verse 27, the Sabbath wasn't made for man. Man was made, and, and, and the, I'm sorry, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And so we have our Sabbath every day with Jesus. We have our rest in him. We have our peace in him. You know, your self efforts can stress you out. They can they can make you anxious. But when we accept grace, that's the answer. We accept grace. I thank you, Lord, for your grace. I thank you, Father, for for taking care of all my needs. Jesus said in Matthew eleven. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, we we take the yoke of, of Christ. We begin to labor for him and with him. You know, when 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 they used to uh, plow with with oxen or with mules or whatever, they would they had these double yokes, and they were they would go over the neck of the animal and then wrap down around their chest, and the two animals had to be matched so that they would pull evenly. Because otherwise, one would do all the work and the other one would just kind of lean back. Well, see, when Jesus said that we take his yoke on us, he is the strong one. And we are the weaker. And we work with him, but what? He does most of the work. And it's up to us to to just stay in the yoke and work with him. And we do that by resting in him. We don't find rest in Buddha or Muhammad or any other religion. We only find it in Jesus. He gives rest unto your soul. You know what your soul is? It's your mind. It's your will. It's your emotion. 
That's, that's the soul. And see, he gives rest unto your mind, unto your, to your emotions. You have rest in him. Are you tired? Worn out? This is, this is Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 28 through 30. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Religion's a terrible thing. Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me in my, and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now, see, we get we get tired, we get worn out, burned out. You know, people people gave me a book several years ago about pastors burning out, and pastors. You know, there's there are there are things out there that talk about pastors that are leaving the ministry and 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 they're leaving they're leaving they're going away they're walking away from their calling because they're so burned out religion will do that to you see i i don't believe in religion i believe that that i believe in in living in jesus I believe in him, and I trust him. Religion does things. They don't even know why they're doing it. They just, they just do it. You know, they, they, they have to perform in a certain way. It has to be done just this way, or it's not right. Well, sometimes, sometimes God will direct you to do it in a different way. He'll, how do you think inventions and, and, New ways of doing things happen. It's because God will direct somebody to do it a different way. And so we have to trust in him. We have to trust in God and 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 allow him to, to uh, work in our lives. You, you get burned out trying to do be good through your own efforts. And you know when you when you get into religion and you got this big to do list, you got to do it just this way, and it has to be done. You know, step one, step two, step three, step four. But when you trust God, He sometimes He will skip all the steps and come right down to the right down to the heart of the thing. Amen. God gives to us when we're at rest. And when you see a miracle, you know somebody was resting. Because miracles take place when somebody is at rest and at peace. That's when you will see the miracle take place in your life. When you are at peace and at rest. And not worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. Pastor, you don't know what I'm going to go through tomorrow. Doesn't matter. If you trust God, it, what you're going to go through tomorrow, you'll go through it. And, and you know, there's a book out there that says when you're going through hell, keep going. Until you get through. Well, when you're at rest, you can just walk on through the problem. You can walk on through the situation. But you don't know that situation's going to bring shame to me. Not if you're at rest. You won't worry about what other people think. You won't be concerned about, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, I, I was working for a company and I was, I was fairly happy in this job. And I got called into the office, and they said, um, Alan, 
we're selling your portfolio. We're going to sell it uh, to another company. And so we're going to have to close this office. And, and I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm the manager of this office. How, how's this going to work? And they said, you have, you have two choices. You can either move away and, and the other company will hire you or we're going to have to lay you off. And I was walking back to my desk after this meeting and, and all these thoughts were swirling in my mind and the thing that came out of my mouth is my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. And a month later, I was working in a job that paid me about about uh, 40% more. Amen. We can be at rest even when the world looks like it's going to fall apart. And, you know, so many people, if you tell them they're going to get laid off, they just don't know. They cry, they whine, they complain. <clears throat> but my, you know, once God spoke that scripture into my heart, my God shall supply all my need. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Once that scripture came alive in me, you know, it was like, okay, I'm going to get laid off. So what? God's got something better for me. And sure enough, he did. We have to, we have to stop worrying about temporary things. You know, whatever you're going through today, I'm telling you, it's temporary. And God will take care of it. And he will, he will promote you if you just allow him to. You know, in, in Psalm chapter, one, chapter 127, verse 1, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. See, the Lord takes care of you. He builds your house. He builds your mental facilities. He builds your heart. He has, he has sent his Holy Spirit to us to allow us. I mean, let, let's look at that in the, <coughs> in the New, Le New Living Translation. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects the city, guarding it with sentries will do it no good. It's useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Now, this, you know, we, we can look at this in the natural, that, yeah, you have to, the Bible's clear. It says if you don't work, you won't eat. But there's, there's a caveat in that God will provide for us in, in regardless of what's going on. I mean, look at Elijah. There was a drought in the land. Crops wouldn't grow. People were starving to death. People, people, you know, and we see this happening throughout the, the Old Testament. People were, were dying because of the lack of food, lack of water. I mean, a drought, there's no water. And Elijah, the prophet, was saved. God put him in a cave by a stream where he could drink water, and the ravens brought him food. Now, who instructed the ravens to bring food to a man? It had to have been God. God did it. He instructed them to, to, to okay, 
take this to Elijah. Take this to Elijah. The, the you know there were angels I believe that were were pushing those ravens through the air to go the right direction to take that food to Elijah. And the stream dried up. Now what am I going to do, Lord? Well, I want you to go down to Zarephath and you find the, the poorest woman in town. And then you go in and, and, and stay with her and we're going to we're going to provide you food. Go to the don't go to the head of the city, don't go to the to the king, don't go to the big guy in town. I want you to go to the poorest woman in town. Well, that doesn't make sense, but I'll do it. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think like Elijah was thinking. It just, just doesn't make sense to me, but I'll do it because you told me to, Lord. And so he went down to Zarephath, and, and there's this poor woman out there picking up sticks. He said, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm going to build a little fire. I'm going to cook the last of our meal and oil, and, and I'm going to make a little cake for my son and I, and then we're going to eat it, and we're going to die. He says, wait a minute. Bring me a cake. She said, I don't have a cake for you. We're going to die. Don't you understand? Bring me a cake. Bring it to me, and, and we're going to see what God does. And when she did, the meal barrel never ran out. The oil jar never ran out. And they always had enough to, to get them through the drought without, without starving to death. They always had enough, and they got through the drought. And we see that kind of miracle take place all through the Word. Now, if God is doing it in the Old Testament, and we're under a much better covenant than they were, come on, folks, it's going to happen for us. Amen. You know, the, the world says, oh, well, our food supply is all going to run out. No, it's not. Not for those of us that believe God. Oh, well, everything's going to fall apart. Not for those of us that believe God. You know, God will provide you with a place. He will provide you with enough food, enough water, enough clothing, enough of everything if you will simply seek his face and trust in him and seek his righteousness. And then all these things will be provided for you. That is a promise of the word of God, folks, believe it. Amen. God will give you rest instead of worrying, instead of instead of crying over spilled milk, just believe God for another cow. You know, we, we have to trust God. We have to trust him with everything in us. And when you start to trust him, he'll give you rest. He'll give you peace. And you can stop worrying about everything that's taking place around you. Folks, I invite you today, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, today is your day. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Accept him. Don't wonder about this, that, or the other. Jesus is alive and he's powerful. He, he, is, he is on the throne and he is coming back for his beloved. And we as, we as believers, I, I just want you to know that as you will accept him, you become a child of God. And all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died for my sin, that you rose from the dead. I believe it, that you died for my sin and you rose from the dead. And then tell somebody, tell somebody, 
If you can't think of anybody else to tell, call me. Text me. Private message me. However you want to do it. But believe in your heart and then tell somebody. Speak it out of your mouth. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Savior. And you... You know, regardless of what you call it, whether you call it, I'm saved, I'm born again, I've received Jesus as my Lord, it's salvation, you know, however you want to word it. But believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. Amen. Amen.